Good morning. Thanks for joining me. Today I'd like to talk about the MCV80 Warrior Infantry Fighting Vehicle of the 1980s. I believe it's still in service and will continue to be of use to the British Army until 2024. How did I come to meet up with the MCV80? Well, in the early 80s, as a mechanical fitter from Spitdock Shipyard, I retrained to program industrial robots. It was an intensive course, which I thoroughly enjoyed and at the end of the course I was offered two positions Janichi Sykes Robotics of Preston and British Aerospace I took the cutting edge project, the Janichi Sykes Robotics. They got me along to Preston, trained me up on programming a robot in their robotics programming language and I'd have to say Back in the early 80s, it was absolutely crude, but it worked. Could you believe that we saved each programming session on a tape, in a tape recorder? Yep. Fragile as tapes are, and we've all had them unravel, <laughs> and we all know how to use a pencil to put the tapes back where they belong. But anyway, I and a team of fellow programmers would be programming around the clock on shifts. Now, moving on to where the MCV-80s were being built. We took cars, which was fun of a brand new Sierra blasting down the road we took cars down to GKN Sankey in the Midlands and this is where we do our work what was it we were doing well, the hulls of the tanks, let's call them tanks for simplicity, even though people would say they are MCV-80s or infantry fighting vehicles. I'm at liberty because I've worked on them to call them what I want. 
So let's call him a tank. The hull of the tank minus wheels and turret were each mounted in a massive lathe. Imagine it. Imagine the hull of the tank mounted between a chuck and a tail post. Once you've got that visualization in your head, a photo would help, so here we go. Once the hull of the vehicle is in the lathe, you can rotate it. If the industrial, <coughs> excuse me, if the industrial robot is mounted on the cross travel of the rather large lathe, which is also mounted on the long travel, then you've got access to move the robot up and down the hull of the tank in and out towards the tank and just as you would position a lathe exactly where you want I could position the arm of the robot exactly where I wanted what would I be doing with the robot arm the hull of the tank has been freshly welded I would be programming the robot to metal spray then wire brush and clean up any metal spray around every weld on the tank each of the lighter marks you see on the photo are where metal spray has been attached this de-stresses the weld these tanks were made of armour-plated aluminium with a coating, very light, which led to a very light fighting vehicle. To see it in operation on the test track doing 60 mile an hour and the turret and gun are holding station just like a bird in flight the hull and lower part of the tank may well be oscillating as they go over bumps on a battlefield but the turret and gun hold station absolutely rigidly on station amazing bit of technology to see and no doubt to be in getting back to the booth of programming the robot on the end of our robot we had 
a dildo shaped rubber bung. This allowed us to crash into the robot without doing any harm. That's not to say we aim to crash at all. But when going from A to B, you sometimes miscalculated. And whereas the true robot arm would be well clear of the robot, the dildo would actually touch and sometimes even bend. Now, this was in the early 80s and I don't know how many of you were using computers of the 80s. You were probably on Windows 3 or 3.1 or some variant. I'd like you to look back and remember how many times windows would crash for you and you would have to reboot and start again. Well, this transferred into an industrial scenario where we couldn't afford crashes of the software and crashes of the hardware so we used the best we could but it was still industrial robotics of the early 80s and to actually press play and record on the tape at the start of a programming session it was staggering. Not at the time, it was normal, but it was staggering when I think back. We had a teaching pendant, so we would start recording, position the robot arm at the start of the weld, drive the robot to point B press save drive the robot to point C press save drive the robot to point E press save you get the picture the repetition around things like the wheel area or where the wheel would be mounted had a number of repetitions the hull slightly different in its shape and then there was the hole for the turret where we actually took the robot arm inside for some metal spraying and Great blasting. Why did they use robots at all? Well, apparently they don't anticipate the start or the end of a weld. They're completely linear in flow. And that's what GKN Sankey needed. They had some super welders and I got to meet them. And I got to hold and touch a few of the pieces of aluminium. And they were super lightweight pieces of aluminium. 
Lots of them look like bullkins. You get the picture. So they had very skilled welders, but none could match a robot for starting at the start and finishing at the finish of a weld without anticipating. So that was the reasoning behind using robots. Many hours of programming to trace the outline of the hull in the lathe. Lots of time on your own programming. If we had visitors, we would be asked to load in a program where the robot arm did something clever, fancy, flowing, and then press go. Who were these visitors? It was the middle of the night, the early 80s, wars going on all over the world and GKN were trying to sell these vehicles to prospective buyers. Some of the suits that came in the module, some of the suits, well, I would never be able to afford a suit like that. There wasn't any dialogue. They stood at the distance while I did my thing. I should have said the robot did its thing. Complete with dildo. <laughs> So that was planned visits. The rest of the time we got on with programming. And at the changeover of shift, we would discuss how it had gone, what channels we'd saved, what was going next. Every weld had to be processed. The programming went on for weeks. During my downtime, I was working during the night for most shifts. During my downtime, I would have access to the Ford Sierra and I would travel the length and breadth of the local River Trent and rivers around Shrewsbury, the Iron Bridge Gorge. I would do the sightseeing bit and the fishing bit. And I was also, but don't tell anyone, I would fly back up home to see my relatively young family <laughs> and occasionally all the team would meet in a local snooker hall now being an avid player of snooker who can't ever let you win it's not in me when I play a game of snooker, I want to win. I haven't got the skill to do anything else except play as hard as I can. So beating the boss at snooker wasn't my wisest decision. <laughs> oh well. What can you do? 
I was 30 in my early 30s and I thought I could take on the world <laughs> anyway back to the MCV80 weeks and weeks of programming and watching it on the test track finally evolved into a finished product years later through would you believe carp fishing I met two guys at a lake who'd had the benefit of an MCV80 warrior tank out in a war zone two of the Yorkshire Regiment two of Britain's finest infantrymen It was a great pleasure to meet them. We became firm friends and they're really, really a great lads. They don't talk openly about war, but the connection of them having traveled to war zones and been supported in war zones by the warrior was touching to hear and they seemed to be pleased to see me as an aside I did lend them some of my fishing gear and the both showed immense skill at catching carp off the top large pieces of tiger bread floating and that was the subject of another video elsewhere on my channel I see I see them both occasionally on Facebook and I've seen one of them in my house sat in my city chatting away offering any help I ever need at any point and I do believe they would come and support me should I need it so the Yorkshire Regiment brilliant so that was the culmination of programming an industrial robot to work on the MCV80 the warrior thanks for watching join me again soon